We opened the textbook for Armenian C-153 course of Peter Cowie entitled Art, Politics, and Nationalism in Modern Armenian Literature. In this book, we are baffled to find out that nations and communities are only imaginary and that national consciousness and national identity developed in modern times as a result of such imaginary thinkers. The book tries to teach that individual freedom stands above the nation or devotion to the motherland. What is this? Is this an ideological tutoring and political brainwashing, or is this a course on Armenian history and culture? In this textbook, you can find excerpts from Ronald Grigor Suni's infamous book. In fact, Peter Cowie's goal is an attempt to decompose the Armenian identity of Armenian students. Simon Payaslian, a professor of modern Armenian history and literature at the Boston University. In 2007, he published his book, The History of Armenia. This book is written like a high school essay which supposedly includes the period of 3,000 years of Armenian history. The back of Payaslan's book includes a generous praise of his work by no other than the promoter of Turkish propaganda, Ronald Suni. For Payaslan, the earliest record of the name Armenia is the Behistun inscription from the 6th century BC. In fact, so far, the earliest found record that mentions Armenia Armani is the inscription of Akkadian king Naram Sin made in the 23rd century BC. Payaslan also does not mention that the same Behistun inscription is trilingual and in fact mentions Armenia as a synonym for Urartu. Payaslan further distorts Armenian history by claiming that the Yervanduni royal dynasty is not Armenian. In the last part of this falsifier's book entitled Independence, Modernization and Globalization, Payaslan writes that between 1992 to 1994, more than 700,000 Armenians migrated out of Armenia, including 61% women. Payaslan uses an unreliable foreign-funded source, HEDC Online, and states that a large percentage decided to remain in their new host countries to work in various jobs, including prostitution. Simon Payaslan, The History of Armenia, page 221. Payaslan makes a cheap attempt at degrading the honor of Armenian women by twisting words and talking about large percentage including prostitution. One wonders how it was possible for Payaslan to come up with any statistical percentage base. This really shows the true intent of Payaslan who is simply fulfilling yet another political order through this book. Payaslan's handlers are preparing Simon Payaslan as the successor of Richard Hovhannisian at UCLA. We have to realize that we are not dealing here with individual cases and in the likes of Nina Garsoyan, Ronald Suni, Robert Thompson, Richard Hovhannisian, Peter Cowie, Simon Payaslan and others. In fact, this is an organized, planned and systematically implemented anti-scholastic and anti-Armenian political agenda. The existence of the false armenological school is based on the promotion of the NATO allies of the Anglo-American and Turkish political interests. It is not news to anyone that the Turkish government is lobbying the US congressmen and senators by spending millions of dollars. At the same time, they spend considerable sums of money in trying to promote anti-Armenian propaganda in American universities and academic publications. The Turkish government implements financial transactions through its Chase Manhattan branch in Istanbul. The headquarters of the Chase Manhattan Bank in New York has accounts of affiliate charitable organizations which receive Turkish transactions for following distribution. It is not a coincidence that representatives of the False Armenological School in March of 2002 in Michigan University organized a closed-doors conference on the Armenian Genocide entitled 
Turkish-Armenian dialogue, in which not coincidentally there were no scholars from Armenia present. The legendary Hrean Dink's newspaper Akos, in its March 22nd issue, exposed that the position of the Armenian participants was very appeasing to the Turkish side. The Armenian people have to understand that just because it seems that Richard Hovhannisyan, Ronald Suni and James Russell stand in defense of the recognition of the Armenian genocide does not mean that these falsifiers are in fact honest. The threat of recognizing the Armenian genocide has always been used in the United States as a political leverage and a type of blackmail on its own ally Turkey as part of its carrot and stick policy. In order to guarantee Turkish loyalty to American geopolitical interests, the US government keeps the issue of the Armenian genocide recognition in circulation, but never lets the issue find its justice. So. Richard Hovhannisyan, Ronald Suni and James Russell are permitted to make noise about the Armenian Genocide. In 1997, the above noted representatives of the False Armenological School agreed to collectively publish a two-volume book entitled The Armenian People from Ancient to Modern Times under the editorship of Richard Hovhannisyan. This book was designed as an Armenian studies textbook for the colleges and universities in the United States. This anti-scholastic, full of distortions, anti-Armenian collegial textbook unmask the false armenological school and their destructive agenda. This book opens a new rift between the new generation of Armenians in Armenia and the diaspora. The guilt for this destructive and malicious endeavor falls not only upon the authors and the chief editor of the book, but also on some of the officials in the Armenian National Academy of Sciences. These officials, who in Soviet times were used to serving their Bolshevik masters in the Kremlin, have today found new paymasters in the United States. Because of financial expectations in forms of grants, they are bestowing medals, titles and even honorary citizenship of Armenia to the representatives of the false Armenological school who are truly sworn enemies of the Armenian people. Armenian students of the world unite. We are the vanguard of the Armenian nation. Demand from your academic consuls to remove from circulation the two-volume book, The Armenian People from the Ancient to the Modern Times. Demand and write your academic consuls and expose the fact that your Armenian studies professors are complete illiterates who cannot even write a simple three-page school essay in Armenia. If the above two means are not effective, then collectively drop your Armenian studies subjects in the universities and in written form notify the university administration about the actual reason for your refusal to take the Armenian studies courses. They think they can humiliate, mock and destroy our national identity. They think by brainwashing us, they can implement a white genocide. They think they can destroy Armenia in a new way. They think they can cut us from our roots and erase our memory. They were mistaken before, and they are mistaken today. The Armenian people, from ancient to modern times, will live forever.